What's going on guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm gonna to be teaching you how to do a ripped paper effect inside DaVinci Resolve. Let's get into it. So I went on ahead and brought all these in my timeline. I've just got the bridge shot right here. I've also got the piece of paper and then I've got the girl walking down the bridge. I did go ahead and add a marker on the video clip itself because I think that's the spot that I'm gonna freeze frame it. If you guys wanna know how to do that, make sure you have the video clip selected and then you're just gonna hit M on your keyboard and it's gonna add a marker right there. I'm gonna hit Command Z on a Mac just to get rid of that. Uh, if you wanna add a marker on the timeline above, click off the video clip and hit M and it'll add a marker above. So this is the spot that I want to freeze frame right here. So I'm gonna right click on this. I am gonna go to Retime Controls. I am going to click on down on the arrow and we are going to add a freeze frame. It will bring it right in the middle here. We can stretch it out how much we want it. I'm gonna go ahead and add another marker right here so we know where it is at. And I'm gonna go ahead and just cut these in half and uh, that way we know we've got a freeze frame right here and the rest is the video clip itself. We will come back to this in just a second. I'm gonna move our piece of paper out of the way. We're gonna do the same thing to the city over here. I'm gonna hover right where I think I want it to be. Right click, read time controls. I've already added a freeze frame. You can see right there from messing with it earlier. You can do the same thing, click on it and you can add a freeze frame, but I've already got one right there. I'm gonna do the same thing. I am going to split it in half close that now we're good I know this is the freeze frame and so is this right here so I know I need my piece of paper right here on top of the city so we'll just trim that up the same uh, I am gonna grab all this drag it down that way it fits the same right here so it starts the freeze frame right where that is uh, we will go ahead and just shorten that up right there and that's good the last thing I want to do before we go inside Fusion is I actually want to right click on the still and I want to make it a new Fusion clip. The best way I can explain this really quick is when we go inside Fusion, it does not like messing with freeze framed video clips. Uh, so it's easier just to do a Fusion clip as itself. We don't have to worry about it. Um, so that's basically the short example. You don't have to do it but it's a lot easier and when we're gonna do the transition at the beginning and the end, it's almost impossible and it kind of messes up if you don't have it as a fusion clip. So I suggest make this a fusion clip. Let's hop inside fusion real quick. Uh, there's a couple things we're gonna need. So we're gonna click on the media N1. That's our video clip right here. I'm gonna add a polygon right here. Uh, and I, as just a quick tip, it's easier to go ahead over here under inspector polygon I like to invert it, it makes it easier to see what I'm gonna draw. Even if we're going to invert this later, it always makes it easier just inverting it. We're gonna kind of draw around her. It doesn't have to be exactly perfect or pretty. And that will do. You can see that it is the opposite of what we want. So we are going to invert it right here. And it's just easier to draw and see what you're gonna do. Now what we need is a white border around this. So we are going to add a merge node right here. I'm gonna hold shift in it at the same time, drop it in. Uh, we need a background. I'm gonna connect this to our node tree. If you see that it's having a problem and you're not really sure what to click, you can right click on this, drag and drop, and it'll show you where you want it to go. I want it to go to the background and I wanna take this one and I wanna do it to the foreground. That way she's in front and the background is obviously in the back. I'm gonna change this color to a white just because it's a piece of paper. After our background is all sorted out, we need to move back to our media in one and work on the ripped effect. So we are gonna hit shift space bar. We need to look for a displace node. We are gonna grab it right here. We are gonna bring that into our video little tree right there, that should work. Then we also need a fast noise. We're gonna add that right into the rest of them right here. And in here, we can start messing with uh, the edge and the corners of it. So we can start to see if I move a little bit of it, it's going to start making it look a little bit different. So we're gonna hit displace and we're gonna mess with the refraction strength. And here we can mess around with that mess with the offset a little bit. We'll go back to the fast noise. Really, we're just kind of dabbling between one and the other. If we go way too fast, it's gonna be a little bit too much. So we can actually hit uh, two screens real quick. Let me make both of these fit. 
so we can see it a little bit better. If I bring up fast noise in screen one, you can see in here we can start to make it actually be just a little bit closer than what we need. We don't need it to be that big. We can mess with the details a little bit more, something like that. Bring this into number two so we can see things a little bit better. Go in the displace, we can turn that down just a little bit. A little goes a long way, so we're really kind of just dabbling. There's no exact way. Uh, so again, this is just kind of something you guys are gonna have to mess with. But if you can see, if I zoom in here to 200%, you can see that it's starting to actually look a little bit more torn, uh, but it's not too over the top. So let's bring that back. Let's shut that off, bring this back here. Uh, now the easiest way to do this is highlight all three of these. Command C on a Mac, Command V, it's gonna bring them here. Let me move so we can see things a little bit better. Connect the displace to the background, and we can't see anything because it's hidden exactly behind it. So if we click on the polygon, we can actually click on the border width and we can turn it up a little bit. Uh, that way it's got a little bit of a ripped edge. Maybe we don't need quite that much, so we can turn it down just a little bit, just like that. And you've got a pretty nice ripped edge right there. If you wanted something way over the top, you could turn it way up, but that again is gonna start to not look really like ripped paper. If we're happy with that, we can hop back into the editor real quick, just see what that looks like. And honestly, that looks really good. We could tweak a few things, but I'm actually pretty happy with that. There's a couple things I wanna do to make this go a little over the top. The first thing we're gonna do is click on the paper and we're actually gonna go over here to the composite mode and we are gonna mess with a few different composite modes. I actually think the one that I liked the most was divide and then I went into the cityscape right here and I turned the opacity down just a little bit so it wasn't so bright. Something like that. Uh, if you really wanted to, you could hop into the color page. We can make sure we are clicked on the freeze frame right here of the video, and we could turn the saturation all the way down or kind of down. You could also mess with the tent a little bit. So if you want it to be a little bit more orange or if we want it to be a little bit more cool because she's kind of in a more cool landscape right there, I think that looks pretty good. Another thing I like to do is click on the city. Uh, we are gonna add a zoom keyframe, and then we're gonna go to the end of it back a frame just so we can see and I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit that way there's just a little bit of movement and I think that looks pretty cool now you could leave this just the way it is and that would be great however I want to actually have this paper kind of transition in a little bit so for that we've got to hop back inside fusion so I want to have this crumble in from the corners so I'm going to make this fit real quick so I can see everything I'm gonna to go to frame five I'm gonna make sure I'm clicked on the polygon right here for white, uh, and I am going to go to size. I'm gonna add a keyframe right here on five. I think that looks good. We'll go back to zero. And instead of sizing it up or messing with these, I'm just gonna double click on the size, and we're just gonna do like 22, and that basically covers the whole thing. We could actually do 23, and that'll cover the whole corner of it. We're gonna do the same thing to the end. We'll go to like 57. We'll add a size and then go to the very end and we'll do 23 again. And that should work. Now we need to do the other polygon, which is on media one, which is her outline. Inspector polygon one, we're gonna add a keyframe right there. Go to the beginning and we will turn it up to 23. Covers the whole thing. We'll go to where it starts, which was 57. We will add another keyframe and then go to the end and we will add 23. Hop back in the editor, watch it through. And I actually think that looks really cool. I like that it kind of comes from the corners a little bit. So it's a little bit different. Uh, and if you wanted to, because these are three different video clips, technically, we could hop into the effects library. We can go to the titles. We could grab a text right here, slap it in between the two. We could put a text behind it, size it up. That way you've got something behind it. And I actually think that looks pretty cool. You could, again, keyframe the words to slide over. Do anything you want to do because really you've got it behind it. And if you want, we could copy this one more time, bring it above, and we could either leave it the exact same way it is. We could also, you know, rotate it, flip it so it's a little bit different. Uh, I actually think that looks kind of cool. Yeah, I actually think it looks really cool adding that on top. 
Uh, maybe we should fade it in a little bit. That might look a little bit better. That way it's not so abrupt. Yeah, I think that looks really cool right there. Again, everything is completely customizable to you. However, I think that is super dope. Well, there you go, guys. That's how you create a ripped paper effect inside DaVinci Resolve. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Drop a comment below. Subscribe if you're new here. You guys are amazing. I'm the Iron Giant. I'll see you next time. Peace.